أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والضحى والليل إذا سجى ما ودعك ربك وما قلى ولا الآخرة خير لك من الأولى ولا سوف يعطيك ربك فترضى صدق الله العظيم وبلغنا رسوله النبي الكريم ونحن على ذلك من الشاهدين والشاكرين والحمد لله رب العالمين Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made a promise to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The most beloved Nabi of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who is arham ar rahimin Most merciful of all those who can be merciful. And he has made a promise to rahmatul lil alameen sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That Nabi who has been sent and made a mercy for all the universes. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made a promise to him. The background of this is that this surah, surah al duha you keep on hearing it. The background of this surah is that there was a time in the life of Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa in the Makki life of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa before he migrated to Medina when he was among the enemies, surrounded by enemies from all sides, and those people who would constantly taunt him, ridicule him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. In that time, there came a period in the life of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam where the continuous coming of Wahi, the messages from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, Jibreel Alayhi Salaam, he would bring the Wahi to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam regularly. For a period of time, this there was a pause in this series and the kuffar they got a chance and they started to say that the rub of muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam has left muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam he is no more the claim that he is a nabi he is no more getting those messages and there's different backgrounds to this that the ulama have written umm jamil who was the wife of abu lahab she started to taunt the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam spread this that the Nabi, the 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 Rab, the Lord of Muhammad, he has left him, he has forsaken him. Now he doesn't care about him. Nauzubillah. And that time was very hard upon the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. When you are when you have a connection with someone and a connection of extreme love, the kind of love that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam had with Allah subhanahu wa taala, and the love that Allah subhanahu wa taala has with the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, we cannot even begin to imagine that love. But imagine that that connection of love is there and then the messages that are coming from the beloved Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the lover, there is a pause in it. Imagine the condition of the heart of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then these people are taunting him that your Nabi has, your Allah has left you. Then these ayat came, finally these ayat were revealed. وَالضُحَى وَاللَّيْلِ إِذَا سَجَى Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is swearing by the Zuha, the forenoon, the break of the day and the rising sun and the spreading light. Wallayli ida saja and the night when it covers everything, when it surrounds everything and hides everything. So two stark opposites. The night we live in city lives, we don't understand what the night truly is. The night of the desert is a thing to behold. You know, uh, there are certain places where you can go if you want to go stargazing, if you've been there. It's perfect pitch darkness. We went to some one place in Colorado where it was so dark that we were scared to come out of the vehicle. It was so pitch dark. You could come out, you could not see the person standing next to you. It was so dark. So that kind of a night that has covered everything. And the stark opposite first was Zuha, that time when the day is breaking and Tearing apart the darkness, how these things flip, how these things change. Similarly is the situation that changes. That if you do not have wahi for this bit, this is going to go away. These are the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, sometimes this, sometimes that. Ma wa ma Your Lord, your Rabb has not, 
has not become angry with you, has not become displeased with you, and he has not left you. So imagine the happiness that the Prophet ﷺ would have got when these words were revealed to him, Ma wadda'aka rabbuka. Your, lo your Lord has not forsaken you. Ma wadda'aka rabbuka. He has not forsaken you. He, ha he's still, he is still with you. As you see the day and as you see the night, with that surety you should know that your Lord has not become displeased with you, your Lord, ha your Lord has not left you. وَلَلْآخِرَةُ خَيْرٌ لَكَ مِنَ الْأُولَى And what is coming ahead, what is coming ahead is way better for you than what you are seeing now or that which has gone, that which has passed. And of course the other meaning is that the hereafter is much better for you than this world. May Allah bless us Hakeem Allah Mawashraq Tha Thanvi Rahmatullahi Alayhi His tafsir, every single word that he has written in the explanation of this ayah deserves to be written with gold. That he has said that one meaning here is that the honors that we have given to you in this world the honors that we are going to give you in the hereafter are going to be way better than them. And imagine the biggest honor that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Of course, when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam moved to Medina, life opened up. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam got a, a government, an establishment. Then Makkah was ultimately conquered. There was battles in most of them. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam got victory. Then Makkah was conquered. And almost Islam started to spread far and wide in the life of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. All of these things are the things that cool the eyes of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam right in this life. But an even bigger honor that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had right from the beginning is that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala honored him with wahi honored him with special connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself and sent his angels and sent messages to him. That is the biggest honor, the honor of wahi. But in the hereafter, the honor of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his respect, the bounties of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are going to increase even more and increase way, become way more, unimaginably more, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So imagine that there is this time of pause in wahi, the Prophet is dearly, eagerly, anxiously waiting for a message and a sign from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the people are taunting him and then these words full of comfort and full of good news are being given to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes a promise to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam وَلَا سَوْفَ يُعْطِيكَ رَبُّكَ فَتَرْضَى Allah is going to give you so much that you are going to become happy. Allah is going to please you with what Allah gives you. So to understand this, we should think that if there is a king in the world, the biggest honor, when they become really pleased, they give to somebody that they are very happy with. They say, ask whatever you want to ask. We'll prove to you that we have it within us, that we can fulfill your biggest desire. So as if the king is putting all his honor, all his might, all his authority and saying that I'll prove to you that it is within my reach, within my authority, it is within my treasures that I can give you whatever you ask. Allah is saying to the Prophet ﷺ, your Lord will give you something that will please you, will give you so much that you will become pleased. Now how happy the Prophet ﷺ would be? Jibreel is coming in giving this message. And it comes in hadith, the Prophet Sallallahu asked at this point, what? Iza, if that is the case, La arda wa wahidun min ummati wa wahidu ummati finnar. If that is the case, the Prophet Sallallahu said, if that is the case, I will not become happy until even a single of my ummati is in, hell, is in hellfire. Think about the at these, when, when we read about these things, I invite you to think what the Prophet ﷺ was, who the Prophet ﷺ was, and the 
the bounty, the blessing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did to us by putting us in the ummah, ummah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam without asking, without deserving. And think of the disgrace that we do to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when we prefer others over the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that I will not become happy if that is the case, if you are promising me such I will not become happy until every single ummati of mine has been drawn out, pulled out from the hellfire. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did promise the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that we will please you in regard to your ummah. We will let you intercede on their behalf and Allah will, and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and there's another narration where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, will ask the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam after the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam having interceded, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ask the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, hal radita ya Muhammad. Have you become pleased? Oh Muhammad, have you become pleased? And the Prophet ﷺ would then say, when every single person that has said, La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah, will be pulled out, every Pumbadi of the Prophet ﷺ would be pulled out from hellfire. The Prophet ﷺ would say that, now I have become pleased. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The reason why I mentioned this today is that the month of Ramadan is going on and the days that we are living in, in the words of my Hazrat, Shaykh Dr. Abdul Hayy Sahib Arifi Rahmatullahi Alayhi, this is as if we have entered Jannah. Compared to other times, we are living in the times of Jannah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has pleasures, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mercies, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has bounties, forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All of these things are showering from the sky limitlessly. So, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised that every single ummati of the Prophet would enter into Jannah ultimately, the justice of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala demands that there is another principle that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made which is The friends of Allah The friends of Allah Those who have worked on their connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Those are the people from whom all sorrows will be removed All apprehension will be removed All fears of the future will be removed Essentially, those are the people that will enter into Jannah, the people who will have taqwa and who will be friends of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nobody who is not a friend of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be able to enter Jannah. Only the friends of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will enter into Jannah. And who are those people? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has himself explained, Alladina amanu wa kanu yattaqoon. These people who bring faith and have taqwa. So only the people of taqwa will enter into Jannah. Now on one side, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made this principle that only the people of Taqwa will be able to enter Jannah. And on the other side, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa that all your ummah who has said, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah will enter into Jannah. Now I'm telling you something that my Hazrat Shaykh, the Dr. Abdullah Sa'ad Fi Rahmatullahi used to connect and say that this is how these two are connected. This is how these two are connected. One is that nobody will enter unless they have Taqwa and the other is that every single per uh, person from the ummah of the Prophet sallallahu will enter into Jannah. If I remember correct, in the second Hijri, after, second year after migration to Medina, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave Ramadan to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa and fasting of Ramadan was made mandatory. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it mandatory in such a way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Ya yulladhina amanu kutiba alaykum siyam kama kutiba ala alladhina min qablikum la'allakum tattaqoon So that all of you would become a people of taqwa. All of you would become persons of taqwa. Fast in the month of Ramadan, by our mercy, we are not leaving it at your own will that if you want you can fast. We are going to make it mandatory for every single able person. So that you all become people of taqwa and so that you all become awliya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and so that you all become those who are going to enter Jannah as per the principle of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is a special bounty and an unimaginable bounty that is given to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa are we caring about it or are we not caring about it? That is our personal decision. That is our, everybody has to judge for their own self. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said, the words of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as-sawmu li wa ana ajzi bi aw ana ujza bi. This fasting is for me. I am going to reward it. I am going to give the reward. And the full reward has not been disclosed. Parts of the reward have been disclosed, but the full reward has not been disclosed. And another tilawat of hadith it is said, Ana Ujzabi. This month is for me. Shahru Ramadan. This Ramadan, Shahrullah, the Prophet has said. This month is for me. This is my month. And the fasting is for me. And the reward is 
I myself. I myself will grant my special connection of vilayat, friendship, to the people who care about Ramadan. And this month is mine. The meaning of this is that all sorts of mercy, all sorts of blessing that we have to give you, we will give you in the month of Ramadan. Abdul Hayyam al used to say that the first 10 days are mercy, rahmat. The second 10 days, middle 10 days, they are maghfirat. The final 10 days are forgiveness from hellfire, freedom from hellfire, deliverance. Think about it. The mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes care of all your things, all your needs of this world and the hereafter. Then even if you're still worried, Allah is promising you forgiveness. And if you're still worried, Allah is clearly promising you that we will deliver you from the hellfire. That which the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa has took a promise of from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Imagine, is there anything in the world that you can need? Is there any other thing that you need from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? All the things, the month of being specifically, you know, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the meaning is that all the mercies that Allah has to give, Allah will give you in this month. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us an understanding. Similarly, another thing to note here is that the people of Jannah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned a few things for them. One special thing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned is that they will be perfect, never-ending pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And a declaration of peace and comfort and an announcement of it from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through different means. So, when people will be entering Jannah, the caretaker of Jannah, the Malaika, they would say Salaam to those people. The doors will be opened and they will be said Salaam. They, they will be greeted with Salaam. Similarly, the people of Jannah among themselves Tahiyyatuhum yawma yalqawnahu Salaam. They would say, they would see each other, they would greet each other and they would say Salaam to each other. Then, even more than that, there is Salaamun qawlam min Rabbir Rahim. There is Salaam from Allah Himself. Salam from Allah Himself. But then, if you look at the Surah Al Qadr, this night of power, what is this? The last ayah of the Surah is Salamun Hiya Hatta Matlail Fajr. That Salam which is promised to the people of Jannah, that Salam which is promised to them as they enter Jannah, and that Salam that they will greet each other with, and that Salam that Allah will say to them, that Salam Allah is still, even in this world right now, sending salam, that same Allah is sending salam through His angels to the people in the world who are caring about their Laylatul Qadr. So all these two things are very specific for the Prophet Sallallahu There's other things that are very special to the Prophet Sallallahu This fasting in the month of Ramadan and this Laylatul Qadr, this night of power where Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala sends salamti and forgiveness. These are special bounties given to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam the thing is, are we caring about it or not? Are we caring about it or not? And when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is again and again at different points saying that this is my month, fasting is for me, I will reward it. The teaching here for us is, are you doing it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or not? As Dr. Abdullah used to say, even to the people who would sit on the pulpit and lead prayers, don't make it a routine for yourself. Don't do it as a matter of habit. Don't fast as a matter of habit. Don't pray tarawi as a matter of habit. Don't serve iftar for a, as a matter of habit. Constantly keep on asking yourself. Constantly reminding yourself, keep on reminding yourself, who are you doing it for? Who are you doing it for? Hazrat, when he was sitting in his circle, Mufti Taqi Usmani, Mufti Rafi Usmani, great mashayikh of our time, they were sitting. And whenever a question would come, Hazrat would give that letter, to them to answer because the religious edict Hazrat was not a formal alim or a mufti so the religious edict, edicts the fatawa would be given by Mufti Taqi Usmani and Mufti Rafi Usmani they would write the answer and Hazrat would uh, include that answer in his letter in his response so one time Hazrat, Dr., uh, Hazrat Mufti Taqi Usmani sahab Maddadilluhum has mentioned that I wrote an answer and very quietly I was sitting right next to him very quietly Hazrat said to me دیکھ لینا چاہیے دیکھ لینا چاہیے کہ ہمارا جواب لکھنے سے ہمارا کوئی بھی کام کرنے سے ہمارا مقصد کیا ہے what is our goal behind it what are we seeking 
What are we seeking? We should keep on seeing, we should keep on checking ourselves, who are we doing it for? The one thing that we miss, because Ramadan is very special, mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and very unique, that it changes the environment. It changes the environment. Hajj also changes the environment, but for those who actually go. But Ramadan is very unique and fasting is very unique that it changes the general environment of the locality, the general environment of the community. When you become part of that environment and everything becomes routine for you for 30 days, it is very easy to lose sight of the reality of the goal. Who are you do really doing it for? Therefore, the final request here is that keep on asking yourself, keep on asking yourself, am I doing this for anything else? Or am I doing it for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Am I doing it because I look good? Am I doing it because this is the norm of the society or the norm of the loca locality or, the, or, my, or my community? Am I doing it because my sheikh is there and he's seeing and he's going to miss me if I'm not in salah? Am I putting my name on the list because people are going to say everybody's name is there and Falana's name is not there. He's very active in the masjid but his no name is not there. Those kind of things should not be part of our intention. If they are, change your intention right now. We can, the beautiful thing about our intention is that we can also retrospectively change it. Ya Allah, I may have done it for some, something else. My intention may, may have been corrupt at this time, but I'm doing istighfar now. I'm asking forgiveness and I'm declaring and I'm asking you that you make it for your own and you accept it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us acceptance. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding. Amin ya Rabbil Alameen. All the little things that we are doing, none of those are worthy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. None, none of those are befitting of the station of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But it is the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts it. Whatever you do, Allah is fully aware of what you are doing. The reality of our deeds, Allah is fully aware, better aware of our deeds and the reality of our deeds than us, us ourselves. Still Allah lets us do them. Still Allah lets us do them again and again. And we are doing it and we are doing it according to the way that the Prophet Sallallahu did it. And that Allah is letting us doing it, doing it again and again, keep on doing it. Those two are major signs that they are accepted in the eyes of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Whatever we're doing, we should have high hopes in Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala that if we are doing it according to the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that is Nisbat al our connection with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, all our deeds, if they are in accordance with the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they have a very strong connection with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And if we are, even if the, in, the, in the tiniest bit, if we have this fraction of intention that we are doing it for the sake of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, then it is, it has nisbat ilahiya it has connection with Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. When those two things are there, we hope from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that it will be accepted. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept it. Rabbana taqabbal minna inna kanta samiyu alayhi wa ta'ala inna inna kanta tawawu rahim. La ilaha illallahu al-halim al-kareem. Subhanallah rabbil arshan azim. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Nasaluka mujibati rahmatik wa hazaima wa khfiratik wa al-ghanimata min kulli bir. Wa salamata min kulli ism. La tada'alana thamban illa ghafartah. Wa la hamman illa farrajtah. Wa la hajatan hiya laka ridhan illa qadaytah. Ya rahman rahimin. Ya rabbil alameen. Ya Allah, humari ramadhan ki rozi qubul firma lije. Humari tarawih, humari sahamda. Aapke sahamda khanda huna qubul firma lije. Ya Allah, agarche ya Allah, humari amal aapke qabil tu nahi hai. Ya Allah, lekin hum aapke Allah shakur hone se. Ya Allah, aapke rahim karim hone se. Umid lagaye bethe hai. Ya Allah, mehzab ki fazlo karam se. گو قبول فرما لیجئے یا اللہ ان کی بہترین اثرات ہماری دنیا و آخرت پر اللہ مرتب فرما دیجئے یا اللہ جو رمضان کا حقیقی مقصد ہے یا اللہ جو روزوں کا حقیقی مقصد ہے یا اللہ ہم سب آپ کے ہو جائیں یا اللہ آپ کو پالیں یا اللہ آپ سے اپنا رابطہ برقرار کر لیں یا اللہ بحال کر لیں یا اللہ مضبوط کر لیں یا اللہ یہ تمام حقیقی مقاصد اور یا اللہ جو جو آپ کے علم ہیں یا اللہ جو جو نعمتیں آپ اپنے بندوں پر یا اللہ یا اللہ اپنے بندوں کو دینا چاہتے ہیں یا اللہ اپنے فضل و کرم سے یا اللہ اس سب ہم کو عنایت فرمائیے یا اللہ ہم کو رمضان کے مقبولین و مرحومین میں سے فرمائیے یا اللہ محرومین میں سے نہ فرمائیے یا اللہ مردود لوگوں میں سے نہ فرمائیے یا اللہ یا اللہ یا اللہ آپ کی نبی صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم کی باتیں یا اللہ پڑھنے سے یا اللہ ایسا لگتا ہے کہ یا اللہ رمضان میں دو طرح کے لوگ ہو جاتے ہیں بالاخر یا اللہ ایک وہ جو مقبولین اور ایک وہ جو مردود ہو گئے یا اللہ رمضان آئے اور یا اللہ ہم کو مردود کر کے چلا جائے یا اللہ یا اللہ ہم ایسا نہیں چاہتے یا اللہ اگرچہ ہمارے عمال ایسے نہیں ہیں لیکن یا اللہ ہم آپ کے سامنے بیٹھ کر آپ کے سامنے ہاتھ پھیلا کر یا اللہ اس بات کا یا اللہ اعلان کر رہے ہیں 
کہ یا اللہ ہم مردود نہیں بننا چاہتے یا اللہ ہم رمضان کے یا اللہ محروم نہیں بننا چاہتے یا اللہ رمضان ہمیں یا اللہ اپنے سے قریب ہی فرما لیجئے یا اللہ ہمارے ساتھ اٹھانے ہی پر رحم کھا لیجئے یا اللہ یا اللہ ہم سے جو کچھ بن پڑ رہا ہے یا اللہ اسی کو قبول فرما لیجئے یا اللہ یا اللہ یا اللہ یا اللہ یا اللہ انبیاء یا اللہ نبی بنے آپ کی رحمت سے یا اللہ اولیاء ولی بنے آپ کی رحمت سے یا اللہ ہر مقرب آپ کا مقرب آپ کی رحمت ہی سے ہے یا اللہ جب معاملہ آپ کی رحمت ہی پر ہے اور یا اللہ ہمارے اعمال پر نہیں ہے یا اللہ بس محض اپنے فضل و کرم سے اپنی رحمت کا یا اللہ دریا بہا دیجئے یا اللہ اپنی نظر کرم فرما دیجئے ہم نالائقوں کو بھی قبول فرما لیجئے ہم بے حیثیت لوگوں کو بھی قبول فرما لیجئے یا اللہ ہمارا ماضی ہمارا حال ہمارا مستقبل سب آپ کے سامنے ہے یا اللہ یا اللہ ہماری حقیقتیں آپ کے سامنے ہیں یا اللہ یا اللہ یا اللہ یا اللہ کوئی چیز ایسی نہیں یا اللہ جو آپ کو دکھا سکیں یا اللہ یا اللہ نہ ہماری نمازیں اس قابل نہ ہمارے روزے اس قابل نہ ہمارا ذکر اس قابل نہ ہماری تلاوت اس قابل نہ ہمارا یا اللہ آپ کی راہ میں چلنا اس قابل نہ ہمارا کھلانا پلانا آپ کی آپ کے قابل یا اللہ یا اللہ یا اللہ لیکن جب سب کے کام یا اللہ آپ نے اپنی رحمت ہی سے بنائے ہیں یا اللہ ہم پر بھی رحم فرما دیجئے ہم پر بھی رحم فرما دیجئے ہم پر بھی کرم فرما دیجئے ہمیں بھی اپنے مقبولین میں شامل فرما لیجئے یا اللہ ہماری نالائقی کے سبب یا اللہ ہماری یا اللہ بے وفائی کے سبب یا اللہ ہمارے دور بھاگنے کے سبب یا اللہ یا اللہ ہماری غفلت کے سبب ہم سے ناراض نہ ہوئیے یا اللہ ہم کو یا اللہ محروم نہ فرما دیجئے یا اللہ یا اللہ یا اللہ ہمیں اپنے مقبولین میں شامل فرما لیجئے آپ ہمارے ہو جائیے ہمیں اپنا بنا لیجئے یا اللہ آپ ہمارے ہو جائیے ہمیں اپنا بنا لیجئے آپ ہمارے ہو جائیے ہمیں اپنا بنا لیجئے یا اللہ آپ ہم سے راضی ہو جائیے ہمیں اپنے آپ سے راضی فرما لیجئے اپنے دین پر مطمئن یا اللہ فرما دیجئے ہمارے ایمان کو محقق فرما دیجئے یا اللہ صرف لفظی بات چیت نہ رہنے دیجئے یا اللہ اس میں حقیقت اتار دیجئے یا اللہ اس میں تجربہ اتار دیجئے یا اللہ یا اللہ محضب نے فضل و کرم سے آقا صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم کی بے پناہ محبت نصیب فرمائیے آقا صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم کا ظاہری باطن قرب عطا فرمائیے یا اللہ یا اللہ بے مانگے یا اللہ آپ نے اللہ ہماری تمام تر نالائقیوں کے باوجود یا اللہ ہمیں آقا صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم کا امتی بنا دیا یا اللہ یہ اتنا بڑا احسان یا اللہ ہم اس کو سمجھنا شروع بھی نہیں کر سکتے یا اللہ یا اللہ یا اللہ آقا صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم کی ذات کی معرفت ہمیں حاصل نہیں ہو سکتی یا اللہ یا اللہ جو آپ نے احسان فرما دیا یا اللہ جس خاص کرم سے آپ نے اللہ ہمیں ان کی امت میں رکھ دیا یا اللہ اسی خاص کرم کا مظاہرہ فرمائیے ہمیں آقا صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم کے دربار کے مقبولین میں بھی شامل فرما لیجئے یا اللہ ہمیشہ ہمیشہ کی مقبولیت نصیب فرمائیے اس میں ترقیات نصیب فرمائیے آقا صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم کا ظاہری باطنی قرب اور مقبولیت ہمیں عطا فرمائیے قبولیت عطا فرمائیے یا اللہ آقا صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم کے دین سے ساری زندگی جوڑے رکھیے یا اللہ یا اللہ یہی دین ہے جس کی وجہ سے ہم دین زمانے میں معزز ہیں یا اللہ یا اللہ یا اللہ یہ عزت یہ شرف یہ بلند مرتبہ یا اللہ یہ اعزاز ہم سے نہ چھینیے یا اللہ آقا صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم کا موتی و فرم بردار امتی بنا کے رکھیے ساری زندگی آقا صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم کی محنت والے کام ہم سے لیجئے یا اللہ جب زندگی کی شام ہو آقا صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم کے قدموں میں پہنچا دیجئے آقا صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم کے پیارے پیارے شہر میں یا اللہ ہمیں اللہ یا اللہ قبر نصیب فرمائیے آقا صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم کے ساتھ یا اللہ حجر میں اٹھنا نصیب فرمائیے آقا صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم کے ساتھ یا اللہ آپ کے عرش کے سائے میں بیٹھنا نصیب فرمائیے یا اللہ آقا صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم کے ساتھ ہی جنت میں داخلہ نصیب فرمائیے آقا صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم کے ساتھ ہی اپنا دیدار نصیب فرمائیے اپنے فضل و کرم سے یا اللہ یہ سارے اعزاز یا اللہ یہ سارے شرف ہمارے لوگوں کو فرما لیجئے ہماری نالائقی کو نہ دیکھیے ہمارے کچھ نہ ہونے کو دیکھیے یا اللہ جو ہمارے پاس ہے اللہ ہم نے آپ کے سامنے پیش کر دیا یا اللہ یا اللہ نالائقی کے سوا ندامت کے سوا یا اللہ ہمارے پاس کچھ بھی نہیں یا اللہ لا الہ الا انت سبحان یا اللہ انا کن ظالمین انا کن ظالمین یا اللہ ہم جاہل ہیں یا اللہ یا اللہ ظالم ہیں یا اللہ جو ہم کر سکتے تھے اپنی صلاحیتوں سے جو ہم کر سکتے تھے یا اللہ ہم نے کر دکھایا یا اللہ یا اللہ اپنے آپ کو برباد کر ڈالا یا اللہ اب یا اللہ جو صلاحیت آپ کے پاس ہے یا اللہ جو قدرت آپ کے پاس ہے یا اللہ جو رحم و کرم آپ کے پاس ہے یا اللہ اس کو مظاہرہ فرما دیجئے ہم کو قبول فرما لیجئے ربنا تقبل منا انک انت السمیع العلیم و تم علینا انک انت التواب الرحیم اللہم انک عفو کریم تحب العفو فعف عنا اللہم انک عفو کریم تحب العفو فعف عنا اللہم انک عفو کریم تحب العفو فعف عنا فسہل یا الہی کل صعب بحرمت سید الابرار سہل فسہل یا الہی کل صعب بحرمت سید الابرار سہل فسہل یا الہی کل صعب بحرمت سید الابرار سہل فسہل یا الہی کل صعب بحرمت سید الابرار سہل فسہل یا الہی 
كل صعب بحرمة سيد الأبرار سهل فسهل يا إلهي كل صعب بحرمة سيد الأبرار سهل فسهل يا إلهي كل صعب بحرمة سيد الأبرار سهل وصلى الله تعالى على خير خلقه سيدنا ومولانا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين آمين برحمة الله الرحمن الرحيم